Uh, we're honored again to have you here. Uh, this is a moment just to, to pause. This is just why we do this this evening is we wanna just be able to pause for a minute, to be able to take a breath. You've been shopping. Uh, many of you have traveled. How many of you are here from out of town? Let me see out of towners, come on. All right, hi, good. Honored to have you as well. You've been going to the grocery store and then going back to the grocery store for the thing that you forgot. All right, and all that's good because actually celebration takes intentionality. You have to be intentional to celebrate. It takes some effort to do it, right? We get the dishes out, we get the candles out, we get the tables uh, re uh, ready, we decorate, we do all of the things because it's necessary for us to be a people who celebrate. We're supposed to celebrate. In fact, God wove it into the fabric of humanity that even when he created the earth, we'd spend six days giving our heart to work and to better and to bring human flourishing wherever we go. But we get one day to reflect. We get one day to just push the pause button and to breathe and to celebrate what God has done. That's why we are here. And so what I want you to do is this. I'm gonna do something. It might even be a little bit awkward, but just trust me here. Just wanna pause for a minute. And what I want you to do is I want you to look with the amazing people. I want you to look at the amazing people that you came here with. Look at, look at them. I want you to look at your awesome family, your spouse, your kids, your roommates, your friends. Maybe you have to look. Maybe there's somebody across the room you can look at. I just want you to look. Look at everyone. By the way, you look amazing this evening. Great job. <laughs> Fantastic. How awesome is it to be able to have something so rich, to be able to have a moment like this, to be able to pause and to be able to reflect and see the greatness of God in and through and with each other. That's what the pause is about. It's a celebration of when hope was made real, that every person you just looked at actually has real lasting hope right in front of them, right? Because we all feeling the weight of the world, right? The world feels chaotic. You come in here and it's nice just to, for a moment to be able to push that pause button and say, let's get away from it for a moment. But we're feeling the weight of that and the need for hope. Every one of us needing hope desperately. In fact, this season is described often as the season of perpetual hope. I don't know, how many of you have ever seen the, uh, the movie Home Alone? Okay, right, raise your hands. It's basically everyone. There is a, uh, a, a, an intense scene in which uh, the mom is trying to get back to Kevin and she finds herself in some airport in the middle of nowhere. And she's trying to talk to somebody about getting an, a, an airplane ticket and they're completely sold out and she is desperate to get home. And the guy says, I'm sorry, we have zero tickets available. And she says, no, because this is the season of perpetual hope. I'm gonna have a ticket. And that was her uh, cry over the Christmas season. This is a moment of perpetual hope. That's what this is about, real hope. That's what everybody wants. You want, right, I want, is to be actually flooded here in this moment with real, lasting, meaningful hope. To believe that even in the midst of the chaos and in the midst of hardship and the midst of even the hard things you even went through this year, that there is goodness ahead. Uh, many of you have heard of uh, an app, a Bible app called YouVersion. In fact, it's entirely likely you maybe have it on your phone. It's one of the most popular Bible apps that have, that's ever been created. It's been downloaded more than 700 million times. They do every year, they grab their, the most searched verses and they tell each year what are the most searched verses, the 10 most searched verses, they put that out. You wanna know what the number one verse searched this year was? Isaiah 41. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Now, it wasn't just the most searched this past year. It's been the most searched scripture the last three years. And you and I know why. Because we've all felt it. We feel the weight, the anxiety, the chaos, where things don't go well, the a relational strife that exists, sometimes just even in our own homes. And we're desperate for 
hope. To be able to say, take that fear and that anxiety and that worry and to be able to actually make an exchange somehow, to not have to carry that. That's what the human heart is wanting. To be able to know in the midst of the chaos, you and I are not alone. You're not alone. There is hope. That's what this moment is about. For I am with you and I am your God. The very prophesied name of the Messiah, Matthew chapter one is literally a, a, a word for word quote from Isaiah chapter seven, 700 years before Jesus would ever show up on the scene. And this is the declaration about the coming Messiah 700 years later. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means what? God with us with us here, present, to know that you and I are not alone. He is here. That's what we're celebrating, and that's what we're pausing. God came here into the midst of our chaos. He didn't stay at a distance. He wanted to come right into our fear and right into our pain and right into our midst to be with us, for hope actually to be realized, meaning hope in the flesh. Real hope, see, actually has to be rooted in something true and something concrete. Here, let me say that again. If you want real hope this evening, and then hope that actually extends past this evening, it actually has to be rooted in something that's concrete and something that's actually real. Otherwise, it's just wishful thinking, right? We often will use the word hope, but what we, mean, what we mean is wishful thinking. I hope it snows on Christmas. Fat chance, man, you're in middle Tennessee. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Yeah, you might hope you have some sunscreen, so you might need that for tomorrow. I hope our plane is not delayed. I hope that I get more than some socks and a new tie. Dads, it's iffy, I'm not sure. We use the word hope for those kinds of things. But the truth is, is, we don't know. What we mean is wishful thinking. That's what we actually mean. But hope, hear this, hope, real hope, is rooted in something greater. It is the promise of actual presence. Real hope is an actual person who is here to lead us and to walk with us in the midst of real life, in the midst of real hardship, in the midst of disappointment, in the midst of celebrating and joy. Hope became a person. And hear this. He wasn't just there 2,000 years ago. Glory in the highest. God came in the flesh among us, but hear this. He wasn't just there. He's here now. That's the promise. Romans chapter five says not only that, listen, but we rejoice in our sufferings. How do you rejoice in sufferings? How do you rejoice in hardship and chaos? Knowing that suffering is producing endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope doesn't put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us us. What that means is this. Hope is real. It came in the flesh 2,000 years ago, and it exists right now. The Spirit of God sent His Spirit. God sent His Spirit to be with us. And why has He done that? Because hear this, because God wants to be with you. If you want a simple answer to the gospel, God wants to be with you. You wanna know why Jesus came in the flesh as a baby and lived a sinless life? You wanna understand and know why he came in the flesh? He declares it himself. I want to be with you. In fact, 
the final recorded prayer we have of Jesus is he's going to the cross the night before he goes to the cross. He's praying to the Father and he prays over his life and he prays over his disciples and then he prays over every person that will ever come to know him, every person that will ever utter the name of Jesus for hope and life and salvation. And he prays this unbelievable prayer. If you've never read it, I encourage you to read it. John chapter 17, and he makes this rich, powerful, profound statement. He says, Father, I desire that they, the people that are sitting in this room whom you have given to me, may be with me where I am and see my glory. That's why Jesus came, so that all of us could be with him and see something greater. Because you and I are desperate for glory, aren't we? We're desperate for glory. We'll search a hundred different places to try to find glory. We'll try to find it in dollars or careers or relationships. We'll go far and wide trips trying to find glory. And God just wants to say, all those things are great and beautiful, but hear this. If you want real hope, it is found in glory in the presence of God. And that's it. He came in the flesh so that you and I would hear this, would, would experience his glory. To actually have real hope that's actually rooted in a real person who's actually here right now by his spirit. He's there, here in this room. He's here present on everyone that would call on the name of Jesus. That's the answer to the cry of my heart. It's the answer to the cry of your heart. If you wanna have rest and hope, there won't be any one circumstance that will be able to give that to you. There is one who came in the flesh. He is the answer to hope. And we can rest in him tonight. And it really doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't even matter where you're at. There's an opportunity for you and I just to be able to, in a fresh way, trust him. Some of you have never trusted God before in your life. And there's an invitation. In fact, you might even have some question of whether or not God is real because of the pain and because of the chaos you've experienced. This is why Christmas makes things so different because God didn't stay at a distance and tell you to try to get your life figured out so that you could somehow approach him. He came to you and me. And he came into our mess and he came into our pain and he came into our existence and he didn't stay at a distance. The God of the universe came to show up to us so that we can experience the fullness. Because hear this, our God knows what it means to feel pain. Our God knows what it means to feel rejected. Our God knows what it means to feel alone. Our God knows what it feels to be abandoned. Our God knows what it feels like to be betrayed. He was all of those things, God in the flesh. So he knows exactly what you and I are going through. And because of that, you and I can trust him. He's not the distant God. He's the one that's actually here right now. And he's just inviting. You may have known God your whole life. All right, I got saved right out of the womb. I was like, Jesus. I mean, I came out ready, hopping, <laughs> baby, ready to go. You know, Jesus, your whole life, hear this, hear this. There's fresh trust for you in him tonight. There is a deeper calling for him to have, take more ground, for him to have deeper places in you for you to have deeper rooted trust in him than ever before. And you don't have to wait. It's here right now. We can just give our hearts to him in a fresh way and say, God, have your way in me. You can be, feel like God's a million miles away. You can pray the exact same prayer as anyone else. Say, God, come be with me. It's the stated purpose of Jesus. I want them to be with me where I am and I want them to see my glory. That's his stated heart, his design, and his desire for you and I this evening. That's why we're here, and that's why we pause, and that's why we celebrate. So I'm gonna pray, and I'm just gonna ask God to do that in us. Our team's gonna come up. We're gonna get ready just to finish this evening. Father, we're asking right now, would you just ask the Lord? Would you give me fresh hope 
that is not rooted in any other circumstance in this life? Would you ask him? Would you give me fresh hope that is not rooted in any of the good things going right or the wrong things being corrected? We're gonna pray and ask for all those things, but our hope, our hope, our hope is in you and you alone. Hope of glory in us. God of the universe in us. Filling us and covering us and sealing us and leading us and showing us your heart. So would you just ask him for fresh hope and fresh trust? If you've never asked the Lord to come, cover you, and take your sin and shame and guilt and all your hurt and all your worry and your pain, would you do that now? Would you ask him, invite him to take it? Exchange your heart, exchange your life. Maybe you've given your heart to the Lord many, many times over. Here's a fresh moment. God, I push the pause button. You get all of me. Tell him. God, you get all of me. that the hope that we talk about is more than a warm feeling. It is a truth that was purchased through the broken body and the blood shed by Jesus who went to the cross for our sin and our failures and our shame and our guilt. He took it upon himself. God, we thank you for that. We receive that now. Right now, the promise. Washed, clean, Hear this, if you reach out for Jesus, you're made holy and righteous and pure and spotless even now. So we receive the fresh gift Jesus you gave, the exchange of our sin for your righteousness. What a gift, what an unbelievable gift. We thank you for that. In your name we pray. In a moment, we're just going to invite you to come. To be able to receive the symbol of the promise that was secured. And what we do is we receive the bread that is the representation of the body of Christ. And we receive the cup, which is the representation of the blood of Jesus and his body broken was the promise that we would be made whole and his blood shed was the promise that we would be brought into a new family that we did not deserve to be in, but he so radically loved us that he was willing to sacrifice. And what a rich gift to be able to receive. You're gonna have some amazing gifts, I'm sure, tomorrow, but there's nothing richer than the gift you're about to receive in the promise that has anchored you forever for eternity. And the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Would you prepare your heart to receive the gift that Jesus has for you this evening? We're gonna ask the Lord just to be with us in this moment. In a moment, I'm gonna have our ushers come and they're gonna release us by rows to come and receive the elements. 
We thought it'd be easier we could just put it in your chair, but the truth is there's something special about coming to receive the elements. Once you receive the elements, you're free to take them. You can take them back to your seat or you can take them right there. But as soon as you receive the elements, the invitation is wide open from the Son of God to have his body broken and blood shed again for you and the beauty of that. Will you stand with me? Father, I pray in this moment that we would be, feel anchored. We would be anchored in the truth of what you accomplished in sending your one and only son. We thank you, Lord, that you're here in this moment for us to receive. We love you, God. We receive these elements fully by faith. In your name we pray. Amen.